Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Friends, today things are going to look a bit different. Uh, you won't see my table. Um, I think even before you didn't see too much of my table, just a bit on the side with those little horses on them. Um, but uh, you won't see that today because uh, I don't have a table and it's a very, very interesting story. <laughs> I made a table uh, out of uh, leftover hardwood. Uh, I had a lot of uh, oak hardwood, fantastic beautiful wood uh, and I thought that I'll make my special uh, desk for our studio here so uh, I did it all right and uh, I made the desk I made it in my basement and um, we were planning to bring it up today and you know what I did the most stupid thing uh, I made it too wide so it cannot get into this room and uh, so I have to do a bit of surgery on that table and uh, take out a few uh, boards on one side and refinish the edges before I bring it in. So I'm just sitting on my chair out here and I hope you're able to hear me because my mic is slightly further away uh, than usual. Uh, so that's, uh, that's my big story for the day. Uh, and uh, I didn't get much time to prepare for anything. Um, uh, so this is going to be a stream of consciousness video. So you don't have the disclaimer and other things uh, that you generally see. Uh, you won't have the blurb that I have uh, for the channel. So that said, I was just looking around and uh, it's absolutely crazy town in the United States. I was looking at uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy talking about uh, starting an impeachment inquiry into uh, uh, Joe Biden while uh, Trump is around the uh, town painting the town red with multiple indictments and multiple co-conspirators in multiple jurisdictions. So it's almost like uh, the kind of scene you would see in a movie, in a comedy where uh, somebody is doing something on their desk and behind there is this huge glass window in which you have some people fighting with each other, something violent going on in the back background while this person is blissfully unaware of it. Something like that, something akin to that. It's uh, uh, If it wasn't scary, it would be really funny. Uh, but that's what is happening out there. And um, uh, I think that uh, overall, uh, uh, if you look at what's, uh, what's at the top of uh, uh, the news cycle, uh, I have picked up a few things. One of them is this Twitter thing. Uh, uh, it's amazing. Elon Musk picked up Twitter for uh, $44 billion. Um, and uh, at one time he said that take it or leave it and all that stuff. But finally he had to buy uh, Twitter for $44 billion, which many people said at that time. It's uh, too much to pay for Twitter. $44 billion is too much. But anyway, he bought it. And he bought a sync with him to... Uh, you know, as a meme to let people know, let it sink in, I have bought Twitter. So uh, it is sinking in, I think, for uh, Elon Musk as well, that he has bought Twitter. Uh, he has uh, had a spectacular fall for Twitter because it has lost a lot of subscribers and uh, advertisers have fled the platform and it's kind of become a Star Wars canteen scene with all kinds of characters in there. And therefore, uh, in Walt's... Um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg with his threads and thread did take off actually I opened a thread account for uh, ShareTrek uh, yeah, it's not great or anything uh, spectacular it's just another social media but uh, we need to have presence in the social media and I had got off Twitter a long time ago uh, because I didn't like what was happening in there so I was ready to jump into the threads and I think many people like me got into threads and uh, I think Zuckerberg is trying to improve it but then slowly and steadily people start remembering what Zuckerberg did with Cambridge Analytica and all those bad memories come through. So Threads, after picking up 100 million viewers in the first week, uh, 100 million subscribers in the first week, it has sort of uh, gone down. I believe Zuckerberg himself said that they have lost half of that, uh, the number. So uh, I think that uh, probably we as a civilization have reached a stage, or just compare it to a kid, when a child learns for the first time that it can make a noise, it starts gargling and gluing and all that stuff, ah, go, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And then the parent starts teaching it uh, some words. And after a while, the child realizes that, yeah, it's you can speak. It's nothing great so then as we grow we start speaking less and to the point so i think as we as a civilization has come to a realization that uh, social media yeah it's okay but it's not going to be the center of our lives and uh, we are starting to look around and see people next to us 
and we are starting to build some real world relationship again so i think that's what is probably happening and that's for the better because um, uh, it makes us more human uh, and um, even now still when you go out you would find that if people are sitting in a restaurant having a meal everyone has a cell phone with them and everyone has their head to the cell phone and you wonder what they are doing with the people around them so Uh, that has got to change over a period of time but i think we might just be at the inflection point where we are making that change or who knows we may get back into threads if there are some more fancy features or if uh, elon musk ma- manages to rebrand uh, twitter as x and um, does something incredible like application for everything as he said so we'll have to wait and see what happens but it's a spectacular destruction of a brand twitter was well known world over and the tweet was a very very uh, well understood uh, terminology uh, and uh, following out there was also a very understood uh, concept so he is going to have all those um, uh, growing pains like uh, uh, truth social had with uh, coming up with the term truthing and <laughs> so those kind of uh, definition building exercise will have to take place again so good luck to elon musk and uh, good luck to mark zuckerberg and then um, i think that i would like to uh, talk about uh, our portfolios they are starting to look better uh, i have seen a lot of greens in my portfolio but yet there are a lot of shares uh, that are still in the red one of my worst picks uh, was imatics it's still uh, in the uh, in the red it's 65% down so i really don't know if i'm going to get my money back on that but one that is doing very well is fngu it's uh, up 250% i only regret that i sold 60 of them i had 160 i sold 60 uh, in the two digits just as soon as it was 99 i wanted to sell it at 100 i sold it at 99 but i have kept the other 100 that i still had and um, uh, it's uh, it's multiplied uh, 200 it's almost 250% of uh, what i paid for it so it's kind of uh, recovering the loss from everything else that i have incur- incurred so i am thinking that uh, in the next 6 months or so things should be looking uh, pretty good i feel that probably we have reached the uh, top of the interest rate hike cycle uh, because anything more and then the housing sector and others will start feeling the pain and uh, it's going to be uh, difficult and out here in canada as well we are in a really bad situation i think our government has messed up everything with the um, immigration on steroids team last year 450 million and this year i think we are tracking towards sorry last year 450000 and this year we are tracking towards uh, uh, close to 600000 uh, so uh, we don't have housing and housing is so expensive uh, it's uh, it's very scary so anyway we have a couple of properties that uh, we have a couple of condos which we give on rent Uh, and uh, we have our principal residence and everything so we are well stocked up out there but what i'm afraid with canada uh, is that because of this sudden uh, 1 million immigrants coming in uh, within 2 years um, i saw a recent um, uh, statistics uh, there was somebody from scotia bank uh, an economist from scotia bank who was talking about this um, uh, his point of view was that uh, the immigrants are not contributing to the labor uh, so uh, even if the labor Uh, is tight uh, all the people who have joined in are uh, are people who have been in canada for the last 10 years or more uh, and um, the other set was the people who are in canada for more than 5 years so these are the two categories which have actually filled up uh, the 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 job openings so if that is going to be the case and i see a whole lot of youtube videos these days about uh, why people are leaving canada so uh, the next thing that's most likely to happen in my opinion which is what i fear the most um, is that in the next 3 years we are going to see a lot of people uh, leaving canada uh, because these will all be the new immigrants who came in with uh, uh, 30 40000 dollars enough money to um, uh, live uh, and uh, search for a job and get employed and you know put a foundation for their life here i suspect that many of them are not finding meaningful o- occupation probably they are underemployed or probably they are getting lower wage uh, and uh, they are all going to realize that with a child uh, with child care being so expensive and with schools being overloaded uh, with hospitals uh, having uh, so much of uh, 
shortage of doctors and equipments and other things, waiting lists in medical uh, special, uh, specializations, uh, unable to get family doctors, all those things are going to hit home because along with uh, 100,000 immigrants in two years, the government should have increased the number of uh, uh, doctors, uh, uh, primary healthcare physicians, like family physicians, hospital beds, uh, school, uh, school capacities, but they have not done any of those things. So I'm thinking that it's uh, it's going to be a, a bit of a problem and then suddenly real estate is going to crash. Uh, that's when it will crash. It's not going to crash because of high interest rates. It's going to cash be, uh, crash because now uh, there is so much of demand that uh, there's going to be a lot of um, new projects being uh, uh, set up uh, in order to meet this demand. But by the time it comes up, maybe three to five years down the line, uh, these people are, would have already left. And unless we manage to attract new immigrants and uh, if the people who are leaving uh, create a bad PR for uh, Canada, then uh, Canada can kiss goodbye to immigration because the only thing that was going for Canada was the good image, a great uh, government, great facilities and all those things. But if uh, that doesn't work out, then it's going to be difficult. So that's my worry. And it's three years down the line. So... Hopefully by then I can um, divest my real estate holdings and move to a, a sunny climate uh, and um, a place where I can have uh, medicine on demand. So I'm hoping that um, we uh, coast through the next three years. I think if managed to hang on for the next two years, things should be fine. And then in the third year, that's when uh, we'll probably have to take a check and see if my prediction comes true. If it does, then that will be the time to sell the real estate assets and um, make a move. That's that's my plan. Let us see how it goes. So friend, that was my stream of consciousness video for you guys today. And I hope you guys have a great weekend. Tomorrow I have some guests coming over in the evening. So we're going to sit in the deck. I hope uh, we have sunshine finally because this summer, so far it has been rain most of the time. And every time we try to take the tarp off our uh, patio furniture, it starts to rain. So we have to put it back. So we have not enjoyed our uh, a deck in the backyard so far this summer so i'm hoping that probably tomorrow we could so we have invited some friends we'll have some beer and some uh, something nice to eat and uh, have a lot of uh, talking so that's the plan for tomorrow i hope you you guys have uh, planned something good for yourself as well so that's all for now my friends and meanwhile uh, maybe i'll have my hands full next week trying to unglue the panels that i i made in order to create the tabletop and uh, make it uh, uh, maybe dis uh, dislodge the legs from it and then bring it in here and reassemble it something or the other so that I have a decent table for me but I think it's going to take me a week because next uh, I mean tomorrow we're going to have guests and then the week starts so that's the plan for me I'm a busy man now I have so many things to do with that I'd like to let you go my friends and uh, thanks and have a great day bye for now